Hi everybody, my name is Lily Souter. I'm a nutritionist and today I'm taking over Fit and Well's account where I'm going to be discussing everything around pears and pregnancy. So part of this sort of takeover today is because I've been working with British Apples and Pears on an amazing sort of project discussing about how pears are so nutrient dense and they've actually got some interesting components that may be beneficial for individuals who are currently pregnant. Now, I'm also going to, at the end, if I have a little bit of time, show you a quick sort of recipe demo as to how you can actually incorporate pears into your diet. But if you guys have any questions just throughout the session, feel free to add into the comment box. I will try and answer as much as I can um, on the topic of pears. It's definitely one of my favourite fruits and part of the reason why we're sort of discussing pears today in relation to pregnancy is because interestingly, if you look at the UK stats in terms of the most popular birthday of the year, it's actually September the 26th, which is so interesting. So it's closer to sort of the end of September in relation to the most popular sort of time of birth of the year. So if you're born around that time, you have got one of the most popular birthdays. So what that means is there's a lot of individuals who may be pregnant earlier on in the year and looking at our dietary choices and supporting our bodies as best as we can be can help with that healthy pregnancy. Now, one of the areas that sort of individuals may struggle with, particularly sort of through the first um, stance of pregnancy, is digestive health. Now, all of these pregnancy hormones will be all over the place and this sudden shift in pregnancy hormones can actually affect the gut. So it can slow digestion down, it can increase the risk of experiencing things like sluggish bowel movements. Now, one of the key factors that we do need to look at when it does come to optimal digestive health is fibre. And about half of us, or sorry, about most of us in the UK are only getting about half of our daily fibre requirements in. So the target is about 30 grams of fibre per day. So that is what we try to need to try and reach for. That is our kind of key goal. But we're getting around 15 to 18 grams of fibre in our diets daily. So not enough. It's a big public health issue. And if you are pregnant and you're stu struggling with sort of those sluggish digestive health, then you definitely need to look at your overall fibre intake. Now, just one pear, so about 230 grams, provides around 20% of our overall daily fibre intake. So it's a lot. It's around just over six grams of fibre. So a very, very quick and easy way of packing in a fibre punch, which is really tasty as well. So that's one of the first areas just to tackle. Make sure you're boosting your fibre intake. Ensure you're getting in the 30 grams a day. Eating your fruit and vegetables daily is going to be really important and opting maybe for some higher sort of fibre sources such as pears is going to be a really positive first step to ensuring you get sufficient fibre within your diet. Now, one other interesting area that also comes with pears is it actually contains something called sorbitol. So sorbitol is a unique sort of ingredient and it helps almost act as a natural laxative in a way. So if you are struggling with sluggish, sluggish bowel movements, that can be really positive throughout the first sort of um, uh, trimester of pregnancy. A couple of other key facts around pears that I wanted to discuss with you today, um, and then we will move on to ways you can actually incorporate them into your diet. But they're also a source of vitamins and minerals, and some of these nutrients include things like folate. You may have come across sort of folate in terms of, in relation to pregnancy, as being a beneficial nutrient. Folate is a B vitamin and it's really, really important to have within the diet. It's important as part of a healthy, balanced diet to support with pregnancy. You are actually meant to have folic acid supplements prior to pregnancy and within the first 12 weeks of pregnancy to help reduce neural tube defects. But if there are other ways of getting folate from your diet, that's always going to be a plus point. So just to let you know, if you're ever confused, folic acid is supplemental sources of fol um, folate and folate in sort of 
fresh fruits and vegetables is the natural form um, of that vitamin. So folate, folic acid, both very, very important within the diet. And you can get folate within the diet from things like dark green leafy vegetables, a super rich source, but also, as I was saying, it is actually found in pears as well. Other nutrients in there are minerals such as potassium. Now, potassium is something we do need to look at. Having a well-rounded, nourishing diet is not only important for our well-being, but it's also important for the baby as well. So everything we're feeding ourselves actually also is nourishment for a growing baby. So when it comes to things like potassium, the UK stats actually showed that about one in five women have lower levels or lower intakes of potassium. So again, it's something we need to tackle. Fresh fruit and vegetables such as pears are a way of increasing our intake. And pears also contain things like vitamin C and vitamin K, so lots of nutrients in there. The next bit I wanna discuss is antioxidants and plant chemicals. So plant chemicals is found in all different types of fruits and vegetables. So lovely vibrant colors of fruits and veg are all come from these amazing plant chemicals. One of the plant chemicals in pears is called lutein and zeaxanthin. So they are kind of like antioxidant properties. Lutein and zeaxanthin are carotenoids, and carotenoids are currently under research for benefits to eye health, which is quite interesting. You've also got flavonoids in there. So flavonoids are a different type of sort of plant, plant chemical. They um, sit with under the, the polyphenol group. And flavonoids have been researched for supporting cardiovascular health. So tons of amazing benefits. Now, interestingly, you need to try and eat the skin where you can. If possible, leave the skin on your pear because it's got about six to 20 times more um, of these plant chemicals in the skin. And if you're peeling the skin, you may lose about 25% of them. So try and have the skin, eat it whole, enjoy it as a snack or enjoy it within your um, dishes, which I'm gonna talk to you about just in a second. And then the last sort of two areas I just wanted to quickly touch upon in relation to pears and well-being. If you are weaning, um, they could be a good uh, fruit to start with. They are amazing because usually just from more anecdotal sources, they're quite well tolerated. Um, and as we were discussing, they're a bit of a fibre source to support with gut health as well. And there's so many different ways of incorporating them into your diet. So, so many well-rounded, delicious options. And if there's any sort of ways you incorporate pears in your diet, do throw it into the comment box because I would love to sort of know how you add um, pears to your diet. And we've just had a question, what meals can I add pears to? So many. So I'm just, I've got actually a list here and I'm going to show you a smoothie as well in a second. My first one is pear and um, yogurt. It's so simple with a drizzle of honey. Yogurt is a source of calcium. It's a source of protein. Calcium is needed for um, the development and growth of babies. Interestingly, particularly in sort of the last um, trimester of pregnancy, our calcium requirements actually increase. So there's a greater demand for calcium. So it's a really delicious sort of um, breakfast or even snack or a really healthy dessert. And the fats from the yogurt and the sugar from the pears or the natural sugars actually help to give it those hyper palatable qualities, those more sort of delicious, satisfying properties. Pear, lime and spinach smoothie, which I'm just gonna demo in a second, is another one. Um, warming pear porridges are perfect. So if you can make a porridge or even overnight oats and add your pears to that, that's great. Oats are a source of slow-release carbohydrates. Our brain literally runs on sugar to function. It uses as much as 20% of all energy required by the body. And we need to drip feed energy to the brain in a steady release. So we need to have sustained energy, but it's also good for sustained energy throughout pregnancy. And obviously you're still getting energy um, as a slow release from the pears. I also love adding sort of or combining sweet and savoury foods together. So pears alongside with more savoury foods such as oily fish like mackerel is a really delicious combo. And I have got a combo where you have a bit of um, fennel, lemon juice, watercress, 
uh, combine it with some pumpkin seeds, add a little bit of creme fraiche. You may want to drizzle it with some lime. And interestingly, not only does that taste great, that savory and, and sweet combo, but oily fish contains omega-3 fats. Omega-3 fats are so important for the brain and particularly during pregnancy for the baby's development um, of the brain. It's a super important nutrient and we definitely need to have oily fish on a weekly basis. Um, just one last sort of top tip. Um, you can actually make things like toasties with pears so you can combine it maybe with a bit of goat's cheese. Those two flavour combos work really well. So if you have sort of two slices of whole grain bread and put some goat's cheese, a few slices of pear in there and toast it, it could be delicious. And just with regards to bread, you may want to opt for bread which is fortified with certain nutrients, like a little bit of iron, it may also have folic acid in, um, all of which is important for healthy pregnancy. So saying that, I'm just going to show you a really quick, delicious smoothie recipe um, what, as to what you can do at home. So I'm just going to literally twist this around and hopefully you can see in a second my table so this is probably one of my favorites because it is so so refreshing so within here we're just going to add um fresh pear these are conference pears which are british conference pears um, i always think it's good to eat locally where you can if you can source your fruits and veggies um, from the UK, that's obviously always gonna be a plus point. Okay. So we're just gonna add, add our pear into there. You just need to chop it ever so slightly, so roughly, just like so. A bit of avocado gives it that lovely, cool, creamy flavor. And for those who've just joined, um, we're just discussing pears at the moment and how you can incorporate them into your diet and the health benefits, particularly during pregnancy. So the avocado, as I was saying, gives it a lovely, cool, creamy flavour and you can actually um, add frozen avo if you like, if you want even more um, sort of cooling and refreshing. Lime. So we'll do a squeeze of lime. So add that in there. A handful of spinach. We've got some iron in, in there. We've also got folate in there. You've got to be mindful of your iron intake during pregnancy. It's, a, it's an important one just to be aware of. Sometimes iron supplements are actually recommended throughout pregnancy, but your healthcare provider will obviously talk to you about that. So a bit of spinach in there. And interestingly, the vitamin C from the pears and from the lime juice will help to increase the absorption of iron from the gut. The very last ingredient is just a bit of plant-based milk. I'm using almond milk here, but it doesn't really matter. Sorry, I'm using oat milk here, but it doesn't really matter what kind of milk you do. We add that in, just like so. And lastly, we're just gonna blend that together. And it's so, so easy to do. It's really refreshing. Um, so those who've just joined, I've made a pear avocado lime smoothie. Really, really delicious. And there's so many different ways of getting pears into your diet. So hopefully you will enjoy that and have a go at home. Um, so just to summarise, uh, for pregnancy, for well-being, make sure you're getting in sufficient amounts of fibre. We're currently under consuming this key nutrient as a population. We're getting in just over half of our daily requirements. So not only for people who are going through pregnancy, but just for the general well-being of the general public, it's really, really important to tackle. So one pair provides 20% of our daily requirements in terms of uh, fibre intake 
also provides some potassium. One in five people or one in five women in the UK have low intakes of potassium, provides a bit of folate, and alongside a well-rounded nourishing diet, ensuring you're getting some of these nutrient-dense fresh fruits and vegetables into your diet is gonna be really important for overall well-being. So thanks everybody for listening. I hope you enjoyed the session and I hope you enjoy the smoothie as well. Let us know um, also if you make it. All right, have a lovely weekend. Bye-bye.